Spanning 10 countries and 3,000 miles across the continent of Africa, this is the Sahara Desert. Just look at it for a second. It's hot, dry, and definitely not hospitable for humans. But here's the thing, it's spreading into sub-Saharan Africa. This huge area you're looking at has actually expanded by 10%, now sitting at 3.5 million square miles of hot sand, a size almost equal to that of the United States and China. It's only getting bigger as well. Yeah, you heard that right. The Sahara Desert and the Sahel, which is the desert that marks the transition between the Sahara Desert and Sub-Saharan Africa, are actually expanding at the very moment you're watching this video, turning everything in its path into dry, non-fertile land. Take for instance, Lake Chad. Here's a photo of it from 1972 and 2007. It's shocking, to say the least. It's shrunk by 90% in just the last 50 years, and that's threatened the 20 million people who depend on Lake Chad for literally all of their water. And like 90% of those 20 million people make their living by farming, fishing, or raising livestock. So to lose so much water in such a short time period is incredibly devastating for the whole region. So why is the Sahara growing? Well, it's kind of tempting to just blame it all on climate change and call it a day. But it's actually a little more complicated than that. Now, while climate change has played a huge role in the drying up of the lands around the Sahara, so has stuff like overgrazing and general overuse of the land because of bad farming practices. In fact, the Sahara isn't actually quote-unquote spreading as much as the land surrounding it is drying up and becoming desert with it for various reasons. But we'll be referring to it as spreading for the purpose of this video. So currently around 46% of Africa's land is impacted by desertification, 55% of which is at very high risk of further desertification. These types of news is why the idea of a great green wall was first brainstormed in 2005. And eventually in 2007, the project gained enough momentum as the African Union Declaration 1378 was adopted, approving the decision on the implementation of the Great Green Wall for the Sahara and Sahel Initiative. Now, these 21 countries are part of the project. Basically, the idea is to create a wall of trees across the entire continent of Africa, from Senegal to Djibouti, from the Atlantic Ocean to the Indian Ocean. It'd be 10 miles wide and 4,350 miles long, crossing through Senegal, Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, Niger, Chad, Sudan, Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Djibouti. Once complete, the Great Green Wall will be the largest living structure on the planet, three times the size of the Great Barrier Reef. Not only is the idea itself insane, but also because as a result of it, 100 million hectares of degraded land would be restored by 2030, capturing 250 million tons of carbon dioxide and creating 10 million jobs in the process. But of course, with a plan as big as this, there's bound to be problems. And there have been a lot of them. The first is the funding. Since the initiative was launched, about $3 billion have been raised with 4 million hectares restored. It's a decent start, but simply not enough given the UN estimates that the project will cost around $33 billion, or 11 times that amount. Now, following the One Planet Summit organized by France in 2021, international donors pledged $19 billion to support the activities of the African-led initiative, which is amazing. But today, more than a year later, the money still has not been dispersed. As for why, we still don't know. But the countries involved in the Great Green Wall project need to speed up the current pace of land restoration to an average of 8.2 million hectares every year to reach its 2030 goals. And that amount would cost between $3.6 billion to $4.3 billion a year. African governments and donors will have to find a way to get that money for essentially the next eight years straight. And there simply isn't a way for that right now. This leads me onto the second issue, the fact that barely any progress has been made. This kind of goes hand in hand with there not being enough funding to actually make progress, but there's also the matter of not much being done regardless. Now, this is the world's most ambitious reforestation project. So it's kind of expected for progress to not perfectly be on track. But the Great Green Wall of Africa has covered only 4% of its target area from 2007 to 2019, yet is more than halfway towards its 2030 completion date. The entire project itself is only 15% underway as well, meaning that everything is happening too slowly. This is because not everything is working how we expected it to, causing a shift in the strategy. You see, the idea of just planting tons of trees in a desert in hopes of something happening isn't really the best idea. I mean, it works, sort of, which we'll get to in a bit. But it's not enough, and it doesn't address the bigger issues at hand such as bad farming practices, as I said before, like overgrazing and over-farming, for example. Tackling this part of the problem can lead to much better success. 
Take for instance the country of Niger, the least developed country in the entire world. The Sahara covers two thirds of it, with the Sahel sitting around the bottom of it. This is an aerial photo from 1975 of the southern village of Galma Kodwache. As you can see, the land was quite barren, arid and lifeless, with the exception of a few trees here and there. Now compare it to this photo of it in 2003, taken from just about the exact same spot. Way more trees, right? This is because of Tony Renardo, an Australian agronomist who had helped farmers identify useful species of trees in the stumps in their fields, protect them and then prune them to promote growth. This approach, known as Farmer Managed Natural Regeneration, or FMNR for short, has been copied throughout Niger and has resulted in the addition of more than 200 million trees in the past 40 years, essentially re-greening their part of the Sahel and producing way more food. This approach is one of the many farming practices that the Great Green Wall Initiative has begun to place greater importance on, instead of just planting trees everywhere. The reason that this plan has mostly failed is for a few reasons. It's cheap and easy to plant a tree, but it's the opposite to grow one. Many trees were planted, but they weren't taken care of, so they never grew. The large amount of manpower needed for this project and maintenance of it was simply too much, given how long the wall would be. Then there were the issues with planted trees being the wrong species, or goats digging them up, or local communities with little at stake pulling trees out to sell the wood. As a result, it's estimated that at least 80% of all the trees that have been planted have died. But this wasn't all for nothing. In fact, these dead trees may actually help African countries a lot when it comes to transforming the landscape. Because when trees sit in the Sahara Desert and naturally grow, die and fall, it gets some root structure into the ground, increases the nutrients in the soil by dropping leaves, provides shade on the ground, preserves the water for longer periods, and helps prevent erosion. This creates a cycle of making it easier and easier to grow things in that land. Improved soil fertility then leads to higher crop yields, and the area begins to look like an oasis. We've seen this work, with China currently greening the Gobi Desert, so at least it wasn't all for nothing. Now, the Sahara Desert is a bit more primed for being transformed, which is perfect because deserts are shockingly bad at holding onto the little water they get, and we need everything we can get. But time is still marching on. Whether the Great Green Wall ends up literally being a green wall, or a figurative wall of productive landscapes, it must get back up to speed because we don't have much time to waste. It's predicted that the number of people living in the Sahel will increase from 135 million people today to 340 million by 2050. And if the land remains as it is now, we can expect a mass migration and humanitarian crisis at a level we've never seen before. Hopefully the wall will work, or I guess we'll be stuck waiting another 20,000 years till the Sahara Desert greens itself naturally, whichever comes first. If you got this far into the video, don't forget to subscribe so you can enjoy more content just like this. Thank you for watching.